Okay, welcome back Semester Astronomy. This is Mr. Krug and today we are going to be plotting our springtime sky on our SC001 and our SC001T equatorial star charts. This is the list that you need. It is posted on Google Classroom. Remember, we're looking at the right hand side of the list and you're gonna be following these four steps down at the bottom. So I'm actually gonna take you through what you need to have on both star charts. And then after you complete yours, you're gonna take a picture and upload it to Google Classroom. Each of these is gonna be worth 10 points. So let's start with the easier one, the SC001 chart, or yours might say SC01, because the publisher changed it this year. Either way, this is gonna be the full chart. So let's start over here in the springtime sky. One of the tricky things we'll see about the spring sky, everybody, we're gonna have a little bit over here at the left and we're gonna have a little bit over here at the right because you might recall these star charts connect at the ends to make a tube of nighttime sky. So we're gonna have a little bit on each side. So first up in mythology, we have Cancer. Cancer is a crab. It is one of the constellations of the Zodiac and you can see there are very few bright stars in Cancer, but notice we do have the ecliptic running right through it. So that's why to ancient astrologers, it was very, very important, even though it's not very visible on the sky. It looks a lot like a Mercedes-Benz hood ornament or a peace sign. These are supposed to be the legs of the crab. And so this is what you're gonna plot first. This is Cancer the Crab. And even though I'm using a brand new star chart, you definitely should have your wintertime sky plotted over here. Next up, the most famous constellation on the whole springtime sky, bringing in spring with a mighty roar, we have Leo the lion. This is the lion's head and mane. This triangle shape over here represents the lion's tail, and we'll talk more about him on the T-chart. So that is Leo the lion. Our next constellation, Virgo the maiden, is a little bit confusing on this chart. Here you'll see the name Virgo, and you just get two little dim stars. Then just continue the line off the page. And then Virgo, remember these charts connect at the end. She continues over on this side of the chart. These are the two repeated stars. So I just remember V for Virgo, V for Virgo. In mythology, she's a maiden, an, a young unmarried girl. On your star chart though, I always think she looks a lot like a white-tailed deer. Like here are the antlers of a buck, and then here's its body with the bright star, Spica. Up here, planetarium tradition, we always say this one with great enthusiasm. This one is Buotes. Let's all try that, everybody, Buotes. So it looks like booties, but this is pronounced boo like a ghost, and then Otes. In mythology, he is a herdsman. And what a great mythology for the nighttime sky, because who were a lot of the Arabs that came up with these star names? They were herdsmen staying outside at night with their flock under the stars. I think he looks a lot like a kite or an ice cream cone. There's a very bright star at his base called Arcturus, which we'll talk about. And notice we've got his dim arm of stars coming right there. By the way, notice up in this corner, look how very close he gets to the tail end of Ursa Major. This, my friends, is the handle of the Big Dipper asterism with the bright double star Alcorn Mizar. Finally, semester astronomy, we have the northern crown of stars, Corona Borealis. So Corona in Spanish is crown. Borealis, like you've heard of Aurora Borealis, the northern lights, this is north. So Corona Borealis, the northern crown of stars. By the way, it's called the Northern Crown because way down here in the summer sky, below Sagittarius the Archer, very, very dim, very low to the horizon where we live, we have Corona Australis, the Southern Crown. So this looks like a cute little horseshoe shape of stars, and this is actually a very old constellation. We first see it on some cave walls in Spain almost 15,000 years ago. So that concludes our easier chart. Remember, this is the SC001. We've got some over here at the left and some over here at the right. Now, teens, let's head over to the SC001T chart. So notice I have one of the newer charts where they have shortened the name here, Sky and Publishing. Yours might say SC001T or just SC01T. Either way, look for the T. So this is our blank chart, our test chart. And remember on this one, it's a little more complicated. Using the same color that you used for your stick figures on the other one, you're gonna redraw the stick figures 
And remember, step two in all capital letters, same color. Please write the constellation names. Now this time we add a couple things. Please put a dotted line for this right here. This is our one asterism or our unofficial shape on the spring sky. It's called the sickle. A sickle is like a big curved blade that farmers would use to harvest their grains back prior to the days of automated farming. This sickle shape makes up the head and mane of Leo the lion. Also on these star charts, in a different color, something other than what you've used already, we are going to have our star and objects. So first up in Cancer, no bright stars, but we have a beautiful naked eye open cluster. This is M44, the Beehive Cluster. And experienced sky watchers know if you can't see it on an otherwise clear night, a spring storm might be on the way. Over here in Leo, the bright star at the base of the sickle, or the lion's head and mane, is called Regulus. The silly way I remember that, I think kings are very regal, and a lion is king. So regal, regulus, regal, regulus. Now the one star's a little tricky. This one isn't named on your 01 charts, but I gave you the bear name with the Greek letter. This one is Algeba. Remember, it starts with an A-L, so this is one of our many Arabic stars. Here for Virgo, make sure you just put her name. And then as we head over to the right side of the chart, in Virgo, we have the very bright blue star, Spica. So this one is Spica. Up here in Buotes, the Herdsman, this one is Arcturus. And then for the first year ever, even though it doesn't say it on our vocab list, there is a silly but effective saying we can use to get our bearings on the spring sky. So notice, here we have the handle of the Big Dipper. A handle is like an arc. So the silly saying goes, we follow the arc to Arcturus and then we spin on down or we drive a spike to spica. So one more time, we arc to Arcturus and then we spin on down to spica. So please add that. So this everybody is your O1T chart. Make sure you have everything over here at the left, including the sickle asterism. Make sure your star names are in lowercase letters in a different color than your constellation names, which should be in capital letters. And on this side, don't forget Arc to Arcturus and spin on down to Spica. All right, that's it from here for Mr. Krug. Please get to work on your springtime sky, and you're going to upload your pictures to Google Classroom when you're all done. Peace.